Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to plot the voltage transfer characteristics for a CMOS inverter. So to start with, let us have a brief idea of the circuitry of a CMOS inverter, its VTC curve and the points A, B, C, D, E and what do they represent actually. So these figures have been taken from the CMOS book written by Kang. So a CMOS inverter circuitry consists of an enhancement type NMOS and an enhancement type PMOS transistor as shown in the figure. Whenever the input voltage is high, the NMOS transistor drives the output node and hence NMOS acts as the driver while the PMOS transistor acts as the load. Whenever the input voltage is low, the PMOS transistor drives the output node and hence the NMOS transistor acts as the load. The VTC curve that we should obtain while we simulate this circuit in LT spice should be like this. The point A represents the condition when NMOS is in cutoff and PMOS is in linear. Why? Because the input voltage is less than the threshold voltage for NMOS. Okay. This is the point B at which the input is low and output is high so NMOS will be in saturation, PMOS is in linear. Similarly, point C is the one at which both NMOS and PMOS are in saturation. Point D is the one in which NMOS is in linear, PMOS is in saturation. And point E is finally the point at which the input voltage is greater than VDD plus VTO of PMOS. So NMOS is in linear and PMOS is in cutoff. So let us try to draw the circuit in LT spice and simulate it so that we can ob observe the VTC in LT spice. So to start with we will click on new schematic and in the components we will go to NMOS and select NMOS 4. At the same time we will take PMOS 4 and paste it here. Now we will require two voltages. First voltage is the VDD and the second voltage will be the input voltage. The, uh, there is a common input voltage for PMOS and NMOS since it is a CMOS inverter. Okay, so we will provide it like this. Now the body terminal of a PMOS will be connected to VDD, whereas the body terminal of uh, NMOS will be connected to ground. Next, we will take the terminal through which we will observe the output voltage, and finally, we will provide the grounds like this. Now let us take W by L ratio of NMOS like uh, let us select for NMOS length be 100 micro and width be 10 micro. So W by L for NMOS becomes 0 0.1 and for PMOS let us take length as 400 micro and width as 10 micro. So W by L for PMOS becomes 0 0.25. To make it visible press control key from your keyboard and right click your mouse and double click here and repeat the procedure for PMOS. Then take 5 volts as input and similarly take 5 volts as VDD. Next we will require the model files for PMOS and NMOS. I have already pasted the model file so I will just copy it and in the op spice directive I will paste it using control V. Now I will require the model file for PMOS, so I will again press copy and in the SPICE directive I will paste it. Let us take the threshold voltage for PMOS as minus 1, here it is minus 0 0.9, so I will make it as minus 1 and for NMOS I will take it as plus 1. Okay. You need to right click to make such changes. Okay, right click here. Next, the final step is to edit the simulation command. Since it is a VTC curve, I will require the input voltage on the x axis, which is V2 in this case. Linear, it should start from 0, go up to 5 with an increment of 0 0.01. And finally, we will run it. You can tell the window vertically and place the red pen here. So this is the VTC curve that you can observe for CMOS inverter. 
Now, uh, the question arises that why are we shifting to the CMOS technology? The answer is in front of you. As you can see in this VTC curve, there is a sharp transition. This is a very sharp transition from high to low. And the high voltage in such a case, that is VOH is 5 volts, whereas the low voltage VOL here in such a case is 0 volts. This is the only inverter which shows the transition from 5 volts to 0 volts with such a sharp transition. Okay. So this is the reason that the CMOS inverter's VTC curve represents the characteristics of an ideal inverter. In the depletion uh, inverter which we discussed before, although the VOH was 5 volts, however the VOL was not going up to 0 volts, which we can see is happening here. And you can plot the points A, B, C, D and E in this curve while by seeing the points from this curve. So hence we have verified the VTC of CMOS inverter and in the next video we will see how can we calculate the power dissipation of a CMOS inverter. So stay tuned and you can ask your queries in the comment section. Thank you.